What's going on everyone? Today we've got some big changes in the trucking industry to break down for you. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, or FMCSA, is laying down the law with new rules that are about to shake up the way brokers and freight forwarders operate. However, if before we get into the nitty gritty you wouldn't mind tossing a thumbs up on this video and subscribing to our channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. Alright, let's get into it. We're going to first peel back the layers on these new rules because they're more than just bureaucratic talk. They're a response to real issues in the trucking game. So so here's the deal. The FMCSA isn't pulling punches anymore. They've been in the ear of carriers listening to the struggles and Chris Henry, the FMCSA Pennsylvania Division Administrator, summed it up pretty well. We know that the majority of them operate with integrity and uphold the contracts made with motor carriers and shippers. However, as you or someone you know has experienced, something that is all too common is carriers doing their thing, delivering the goods, then out of nowhere the broker doesn't come through with the cash for the services provided. It's been a thorn in the side for too many inside this industry. The FMCSA heard these complaints and decided it's time for some change. Enter the final rule. Broker and Freight Forwarder Financial Responsibility, set to come into place on January 16th. But why is this a big deal? It's not just more red tape, it's a necessary shift in how brokers and freight forwarders handle their business. These rules are here to ensure fair play, protecting carriers from getting the short end of the stick. It's a step towards a more transparent and reliable trucking industry. Now that we've got a grip on why these rules are being made, let's talk about who's feeling the heat. Brokers and freight forwarders. These are the folks who get paid to middleman the game, connecting shippers with carriers to get goods moving. Out of the 32,000 registered with the FMCSA, most are keeping it on the straight and narrow. But there's always a but. A handful with less than stellar practices are about to face some changes. As Chris Henry said, unfortunately a minority of brokers with unscrupulous business practices can create unnecessary financial hardship for unsuspecting motor carriers. So what's the impact? Well, for the majority who play by the rules, it's business as usual. But for the minority with shady practices, the game is getting a bit tougher. These new rules are putting the spotlight on transparency and integrity. The FMCSA is throwing down some specifics. They're limiting the types of assets that brokers and freight forwarders can keep in their financial trusts. Cash, irrevocable letters of credit, and treasury bonds are going to be more common. These assets will be used to settle claims against those who fail to pay up for services. It's like putting some guardrails on the financial highway. Alright, now that we've got the brokers and freight forwarders in the hot seat, let's talk about the unsung heroes of the road. You, the drivers. How are these new rules going to affect you? Well, it turns out quite a bit. The FMCSA isn't just aiming to make life easier for carriers, they've got your back too. With these rules, drivers are getting more protection against the headaches of not getting paid for the work you've done. No one wants to be chasing down payments or dealing with the hassle of the will I get paid or not game. One FMCSA representative said carriers will have more information to avoid contracting with unscrupulous brokers and could also receive payment for work completed in a more timely manner. So what's the takeaway? These rules mean you, the driver, could see faster payments for the work you've put in. No more waiting around wondering if that paycheck is going to hit. It's all about making your life on the road a bit smoother and more predictable. The FMCSA is also tossing out the red flag when a broker or freight forwarder's financial security falls below $75,000. If they don't patch things up within seven calendar days, their operating authority is going to get suspended. It's a move to prevent these folks from stacking up more unpaid claims over time, which, let's be honest, is good news for you. Now let's flip the coin and talk about another key player in the logistics dance, the shippers. If you're a shipper, you're probably wondering, how do these new rules affect me? Well, my friends, it's all about bringing a bit more order to the chaotic world of freight movements. Shippers, just like carriers and drivers, want a smooth operation. They want to know that when they work with a broker or a freight forwarder, things are going to roll without a hitch. These rules bring more transparency to the game. Shippers can have more confidence that the brokers and freight forwarders they are working with are on the up and up. It's like a built-in safety net to ensure that the folks handling their goods are doing it with integrity. But that's not all. The rules also mean that the financial stability of brokers and freight forwarders is under the microscope. If they can't keep their financial security above $75,000, their operating authority is on the line. It's a move to make sure that shippers aren't left in the lurch, wondering if their goods will reach their destination as planned. Let's drill down into the specifics now. The FMCSA isn't just throwing out rules. They're getting into the nitty gritty details. One significant change is in how brokers and freight forwarders handle their assets. 
the financial building blocks that ensure they can cover their commitments. So what's changing in the asset game? First off, the FMCSA is tightening the belt on the types of assets that can chill in broker or freight forwarder trusts. A representative of the FMCSA said, Limit the asset types that can be maintained in broker or freight forwarder trusts to cash, irrevocable letters of credit issued by a federally insured depository institution, and treasury bonds. Why? Because these assets are stable in value and can be quickly turned into cash within seven calendar days if needed. In plain English, it's about making sure that if a broker or freight forwarder messes up and doesn't pay for services, there's a pot of money or assets to tap into to make things right. It's a guardrail to keep things fair and square in the world of freight transactions. Now here's where the FMCSA is really cranking up the accountability meter. They're not just setting rules, they're ensuring swift consequences for those who don't play by them. One standout change is the introduction of immediate suspension of operating authority. It's like the traffic cop pulling you over for a serious violation. Immediate action. So here's the situation. If the available financial security of a broker or freight forwarder falls below $75,000 and they don't patch it up within seven calendar days, boom, their operating authority gets the red card. So why is this a big deal? Well, immediate suspension means no more business as usual, no more taking on new contracts, no more arranging shipments, and definitely no more accruing additional claims over time. It's the FMCSA's way of saying, keep your financial house in order or get out of the game. This move isn't just about punishment, it's about prevention. It stops brokers and freight forwarders from piling up more debts and potentially leaving carriers and shippers in the lurch. It's a proactive step to ensure a level playing field. Now let's zoom in on another key change in the FMCSA's rulebook. The clarification of financial failure or insolvency. It's like they're putting on a pair of glasses to see the financial health of brokers and freight forwarders with more clarity. So what's the deal? The FMCSA wants to make sure there's no gray area when it comes to determining if a broker or freight forwarder is in financial trouble. They're laying out clear criteria for what constitutes financial failure or insolvency. It's like having a checklist. If you tick these boxes, you're in the danger zone. This clarification is a win-win. For carriers and shippers, it means that they can trust the brokers and freight forwarders they're dealing with are financially sound. For the brokers themselves, it's a roadmap to stay on the right side of financial health and avoid falling into the red zone. Think of it as a preventative measure. By defining financial failure and insolvency, the FMCSA is making sure everyone in the freight game speaks the same financial language, reducing the risk of nasty surprises down the road. And there you have it, folks, the lowdown on the FMCSA's new rules and how they're going to impact the trucking game. Now, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts on these new regulations and have you had any experiences, good or bad, with brokers and freight forwarders? Also, don't forget to toss a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel in order to keep up to date with the world of trucking and we'll catch you on the next one.